Today, I'm going to talk about three non-parallel forces in equilibrium. Here, we have a picture of three non-parallel forces. The question is, can they be in equilibrium? Could we find numbers to put on the diagram so that those three forces are in equilibrium? I am expecting you to think about this, not just to sit there and wait for me to give you the answer. What non-zero numbers could we put in for F1, F2 and F3 so that those three forces could be in equilibrium? Is it possible? I hope you're still thinking. Well, let me ask you a question. What happens if you take moments about the point A? Well, you should have got the answer by now that the moment of F2 must be zero, the moment of F3 must be zero, and the moment of F1 is not zero. So here is a point, and the moments about this point of all three forces, the sum of those moments is not zero. If the three forces were in equilibrium, the sum of those moments would have to be zero. So if I have three forces which do not act through the same point, three non-parallel forces which do not act through the same point, their moment cannot be zero, they cannot be in equilibrium. And so I've summarized that there. If three forces are not concurrent and no two are parallel, as shown in the diagram, the moment about A can never be zero. The forces can never be in equilibrium. So if you are going to have three forces in equilibrium, then if they're non-parallel, they must all go through a point. They must be concurrent. That is something to remember. It makes a number of little interesting problems come out quite easily. Note that for three forces to be in equilibrium, not only must they go through a point, but the sum of the resolved forces in any direction must also be zero. Just a little final point here. If two of the three forces are parallel, it shouldn't take much thought, with perhaps a diagram, to see that they can never be in equilibrium. And now, Let's look at a little problem. We take a non-uniform rod, so we don't know where the center of mass is. Length 6 meters and mass m kilograms. Supported at its ends by two strings, one making an angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal and the other one 35 degrees with the horizontal. The rod is horizontal and it's in equilibrium. Find the position of its center of mass. So what idea do I need now? Well, you could do what you would have done before you uh, met this section. You could just start taking moments and have various different uh, equations and solve them with an unknown length x there. But we have just seen that if you have three forces and if the system is in equilibrium, those three forces must all go through the same point. We have three forces. We have the weight. We have the tension in one string and the tension in the other string. Those three forces must go through the same point. That is going to make this 
quite an easy little problem. So there is a picture of what's going on with those three forces all now shown to be going through the same point P. I've called the distance X from the end of the rod, the left hand end as we're looking at it. The rod was of length six, mi oh, of six meters, therefore that length is six minus X. Now let's look at the length PG. P, I was going to have a darker blue. PG, if I look at the smaller triangle on the left, PG is equal to X tan 50. PG divided by X is tan 50. So PG is X tan 50. And the other triangle, PG over 6 minus X is tan 35. So PG is 6 minus X times tan 35. So we've got an equation for X straight away. The other technique that you would have been able to use, as I mentioned, taking moments about various points, simultaneous equations, would have taken quite a lot longer. If we solve this, we simply get x is equal to, well, 6 tan 35 is left on the right-hand side. And if I add x tan 35 to each side, divide, I get tan 50 plus tan 35. That, if you press the buttons, is 2.22 7 etc lots of points and therefore the center of mass is 2.2 meters two significant figures because I'm using G from the end with the 50 degree angle made by the string Okay, nice, simple little problem. No need for simultaneous equations. You can find a little bit more about this in your textbook. M2 on page 139.